Hi everyone, and welcome to Elite Rugby SNC podcast. First off, if you haven't already, sign up and join Elite Rugby SNC today. We provide you all your strength, conditioning, speed, and recovery needs. You can try before you buy, so try our seven day, seven dollar trial to get a taste of what we offer here at Elite Rugby SNC. Sign up to our newsletter and receive free bonus content each and every single week. So take your game to the next level, become a beast, and join Elite Rugby SNC today. Today, I am joined on the podcast by Raiders 5'8 and halfback Matt Frawley. Matt made his NRL debut for the Bulldogs in 2017 and played 31 games for the Bulldogs before moving over to the UK to play for the Huddersfield Giants. Matt moved back to Australia in 2020 and has since been playing for the Canberra Raiders in the NRL. On this episode, Matt speaks about playing in the NRL, his time playing overseas in the UK, we discuss the importance of strength and conditioning, Matt provides great advice on how to become a successful 5'8 or halfback in rugby league, and I also introduce a new segment on the podcast which allows us to get to know athletes and coaches more. This was a fantastic episode and I appreciate Matt taking time out to speak with me today. Enjoy! So good day, Matt. How are you? Good thanks, Keith. How you going, mate? I'm going well, thanks. So how's the body going? Half or pretty much towards the back end of the season. So how's the body feeling? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Not too bad. It's um, yeah, obviously this time of year you, you, you pick up some some knocks and um, some injuries along the way, but um, yeah, touch wood that for the back end of the year, I'm actually um, feeling pretty good. No, that's good. It's good to hear. So growing up as a young, young lad, how did you end up playing rugby league? Yeah, so um, you know, dad's always been a big Canberra Raiders fan and and always loved his um, his rugby league. So um, I've got an older brother as well that's um, five years older than me that um, played played since he was in in under sixes. So naturally, I just wanted to you know follow follow my older brother and um, follow what um, you know dad always supported. Him. He played a bit of footy when he was younger as well. So. Um, and my, my pop as well. So, yeah, sort of been in the blood. And um, as soon as I got a chance to play in, in under sixes, I, um, you know, I signed up and played for West Belconnen. And, um, yeah, still playing now. Who would be the best rugby player in the family? Are you that person or is it still like your older brother or your dad or your pop? Uh, uh, depends who you ask, but I think I might have that title. But, um, yeah, no, my brother was a handy, handy player. He, um, you know, played a bit of junior reps and everything and then played first grade here in Canberra and, um, yeah, I don't know about the old man. He doesn't talk too much about his um, career, but I know my pop was a really good player. He, he played, um, grew up in Maxville and, um, and and come down here and played some footy in Canberra. So, um, yeah, it's as I said, it's, it's in the bloodline. That's awesome. I'm sure the footy will come out on Christmas Day and people start to G you up and see if, if they are better than you. Yeah, that's right. Well, I'm still, I think you might know my uh, my cousins, Liam and Callum Richardson. We used to, they're sort of rugby union um on the rugby union side but um they you know we used to play a lot of touch footy together and um yeah christmas time and easter time would i get the footy out and i'd run rings around them and i still do so <laughs> yeah that's, all yeah. that's awesome so what what age did you think you can start playing in the nrl was there a certain time that you're like wow i could actually make the nrl um yeah probably wasn't until later to be honest i was sort of you know i wasn't really a a gun junior or anything like that. I was um, probably a bit of a late developer and um, in terms of um, playing good footy. Um, so yeah, it probably wasn't until I, I played under twenties. Um, my first year, you know, I didn't really get a crack in sixteens or eighteens. I was in the squads, but never really played. And then um, under twenties had a, a really good preseason and made the squad and sort of played from round one. And we had a really strong team and um, you know started to play some good footy then. And then. Picked up a couple of injuries in that year, and then um, my last year of twenties was when I sort of really, um, you know, played my best footy, and it was at a good time because it was sort of coming off contract, and um, you know, you sort of make that leap from going into the twenties into a full time system. So um, yeah, got an opportunity off the back of that, but yeah, it, it definitely wasn't until you know I was probably 18, 19, 20 years old that I thought you know I might, I might be half a chance of um, of cracking it. Mm, it's probably a good lesson there for for a young listeners. If you're not in the, those rep teams when you're young, it's not the end of the world. Um, just keep developing and you'll get your chance um, if you just be consistent at your craft and continue to play the game. 
Big time, mate. Big time. I think, you know, it's one lesson I've sort of definitely learned from, you know, being in the NRL now for, for a little while. It's, I think, you know, the, the majority of players were players that weren't, um, you know, naturally gifted or, um, you know, freaks when they were younger. You see so many kids come through the system that, you know, played all the rep footy, Australian school boys and that sort of stuff. And there's definitely a lot of them blokes kick on and, and have massive careers. But, um, you know, there's definitely a lot of players that, um, you know, had to work work hard for it when they were younger and weren't sort of given every all the opportunities and um, that set them up, you know, well for, for long NRL careers. Mm, 100%. So what's it like playing in the NRL? Is it everything you thought it would be? Um, yeah, I don't know. I sort of didn't really have, you know, much of an idea of what it would be like. Um, it's, you know, it's awesome. It's, it's unreal. It's, um, you know, we're pretty, pretty lucky to have be able to do it as a job and, um, you know, the people you meet and, experience you have on the back of it's um you know is, is unreal but um yeah there's pl- plenty of ups and downs i think you know especially for probably players like myself that are fringe that aren't playing there's some challenges but um you know i've, I've learned to, to deal with them and um the actual side the actual you know the, the playing side of it and you know playing in front of you know decent crowds and um you know having playing in 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 big games is um yeah it's pretty cool and um yeah it's something that yeah yeah i I, I never really thought i'd get to but um yeah pretty happy that i am now what's your favorite stadium to play at so far is there one just that you just continue to like to play at or um is there one that stands out from the rest yeah probably suncorp i'd say i've lucky enough to play um a fair few times at suncorp it's uh, I think it's the best stadium to watch a game of footy and, and to play it as well, just because the atmosphere is really good and, you know, the, the, the way that stadium's built, it's um, that the fans are so close to you. So we had a good win up there this year at, at Magic Weekend and that was my first Magic Magic round that I played in. And, um, you yeah, know, it was an awesome concept that, you know, we had... Um, yeah. 25,000 people also so that was really good to to have a good win obviously that makes the memories a bit better but yeah I'd I'd probably say Suncorp's definitely right up there that's awesome and how's the new new facility going because it's it's a great facility um here in Canberra it's definitely a big upgrade and just from looking at the pictures and all that it looks amazing yeah it's awesome mate yeah they've obviously um yeah I think every club's doing that now in the NRL they're all upgrading facilities and trying to outdo each other and We've been here for I think about two years, and um, you know it's still so it's still brand new, and it's yeah it's world class. It's it's got everything you want, and plenty of room, and um, you know the gym's you know is massive and a, a great setup, and then all the recovery um, side of things on with it, um, plunge pools and spas and treatment rooms and locker rooms. It's it's awesome, and obviously the location um, is is really good as well. Being right in the city, we can. Plenty of um, places to get a grab a fee and grab a coffee after training or um, between sessions. So, yeah, it's uh, we're, we're really lucky to have it, and um, yeah, you sort of you don't take those things for granted when um, you've you've experienced other facilities that, that probably aren't aren't as good. No, that's awesome. So, what, so what's your go-to coffee for our listeners out there who don't know your order? Um, just a small cup, mate. Pretty boring small to be honest. Cup. Yeah, I'm, that's all right. I'm too, yeah, some some of the boys mix it up, but. Um. Yeah, I, I, I definitely go. Yeah, um, small cap. That's good. It's a good choice. So, did you ever think about giving rugby union a go? Because um, for our listeners out there, Matt was the year above me at school, and you did play a couple of games, or I think it was one or two games for first fifteen, and you, you played very well. I can still remember briefly. Um, and everyone was just like, "Yes, we need frauds to come play for us." So, did you ever think about um giving rugby union a go? Um, yeah, I suppose I had a, a few thoughts. I, I definitely, you know, was um, wanted to play a bit more union just because obviously, um, you know, at school just because all the boys are playing and, um, you know, it's, it's awesome being able to play school footy with all your mates, but it just wasn't really, um, you know, it was a bit hard playing playing both sports that I really wanted to give league a crack and I thought it might take away from, um, you know, what, what I was doing in league. So, yeah, I tried to, you know, I played a couple of games there um, in, in year 12 when it was during school hours just to get out a bit of school and it didn't clash with footy. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I can't, I can sort of vaguely remember the games. I don't think I was sort of making up, making it up as I went along. I didn't really know the rules too much, but, um, <laughs> you know, I, I really enjoyed it and, um you know i've yeah I even had thoughts of you know playing um you know through sort of recently but um 
yeah, league's, league's my sort of, you know, number one sport at the moment. And, um, yeah, I'd have to learn the rule book a bit more if I was going to make the transition over. Yeah, definitely. I'd have to teach you a few things on that aspect. But, um, yeah, league's definitely worked out well for you. So, good choice out of the two. Yeah, that's right, mate. It's, um, nah, it's worked out well for me. So, in 2019, you moved over to the UK to play in the Super League. Um, what was that spirit experience like and what did you learn? Yeah, it was awesome, mate. Yeah, I, um, I you know, I... I'd moved from Canberra to to the Sydney for four years at the Bulldogs, and that was a massive move for me um, to to move away from Canberra, move away from home. I'd never not lived in Canberra, and um, yeah, that was a huge huge step. And then to to move over to England was you know that other you know that next level. I suppose you're moving on the other side of the world, and it's all sort of unknown. Um, but you know, I, I, lo- I love my time over there. It was um, you know a great life experience and. Again, met some really, you know, some really good people and um, and had some really good experiences. Um, you know, on the field, we had a bit of a challenging year and didn't make the finals and probably didn't go the way that we all hoped it would. But, um, yeah, I've got nothing but sort of good memories about my time over there. And, um, yeah, there's, you know, the, I sort of often get asked from, from players over here, you know, that haven't been over there, that, that if it's worth the experience, and it definitely is, I, I'd... I'd, um, yeah, I think it, it's just uh, away from footy. It's it's a great life experience, and um, yeah, you, you get the chance to travel and, and and all that sort of stuff as well. So um, yeah, I had great memories over there, and still keep in contact with a lot of the boys over there that are still playing. Uh, that's awesome. Do you think the Super League is quite similar to the NRL in terms of the standards and the intensity of the game? Um, yeah, they're probably a little bit different. I think um, you know the, the sort of top tier Super League. There's Sort of probably top five or six teams would would um, be competitive over here in the NRL, but it's probably just not the depth that the NRL has. I think you know, there's a couple of clubs that over there that that struggle. Um, that yeah, probably just don't have the money to spend on on players. And um, over there, it's sort of a bit different with private ownership as well. Um, and and you know, there's only been sort of four four teams that have won the Super League in its whole existence. So. Um, it is a little bit different. I think the, in terms of you know the, the crowds and the atmospheres and everything, I think over there is a lot a lot better. Even though they probably don't get the numbers in in terms of crowd numbers, um, the the atmosphere and the way they um, sing and chant and that sort of stuff is awesome. That was that was a, a a really good experience just to play in front of those crowds. And um, but yeah, in terms of on the field, there's you know, there's some some slight differences, but um, yeah, it's it's fairly similar. Yeah, those those English crowds are just crazy. It doesn't matter if they come over to Australia for any sport. They're just going to be nice and loud and they love singing as well. I love that about them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they got some good chants. They, um, yeah, you see it with the Barmy Army and everything with the Ashes yeah. and um, the APL. Um, yeah, they, they, do it, they do it really well over there. Mm, I think that uh, just reminds me of back in uh, 2013. I went and watched the British Irish Lions when they came over to Australia and it was th- game number three at ANZ Stadium. It was just a sea of red and it was so loud. Like, I think they won the game before the game even started because they were just that loud and that vocal. Um, it was just so intimidating. But, yeah, that just reminds me of that. It was just really awesome to see. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, um, you know, up north, we are in where the rugby league is in England. It's sort of based up north, so there wasn't a heap of union. I think more of the union gets played down in London over there. But um, we, we got to experience a couple of... APL games that went to a Manchester City game and um, a Everton game. So same sort of thing. I mean, yeah, the atmospheres are you know, pretty pretty cool to, to be part of. Mm. Do you follow an APL team? Is there a certain team you like to follow? Yeah, I'm a Chelsea Chelsea man. Uh, I went over to England when I was uh, with my sister was living over there. And, well, I was 2006 and we went to a Chelsea game. And so I sort of just been on the back of them and... Um, yeah, they're, they're traveling all right. They they got a, a new owner now, so hopefully we can um yeah go close again. Well, that's good. No no comment. I, I don't follow an EPL team, so I can't really continue that conversation. But for our <laughs> listeners, you know, Crawls likes the uh, barrack for Chelsea. There that's go. good. So, how has strength and conditioning helped you perform at the elite level? And is there certain things that sort of stand out that you've learnt over your over the years um, through strength and conditioning? Yeah, yeah, I've been um, really lucky to have some awesome strength conditioners, and from my time in um, in the junior reps in Canberra, and um, it's one thing that I think I'm not too sure about the union setup, but with the rugby league setup, they they do invest a lot into their 
junior pathways and one of them is, is, is one of those you know investments is is getting really good strength and conditioning coaches and probably some up and coming strength and conditioning coaches that go on and and um yeah be in our role strength and conditioners or um go on to bigger and better things so um yeah you know everywhere i've been whether it was at the bulldogs um the raiders both times i've been here in huddersfield um you know had some some awesome, awesome S and C um, trainers. They all sort of had different focuses, um, and yeah, I think you know it, it is a little bit hard. I suppose you'd know more than me. It's hard to tailor the program to individuals too much because you're, you're dealing with sort of 30, 40 blokes in a team. But um, you know, it's I think it's up to the individual to to do the work as well in the off season. And um, you know, one one thing I've always sort of tried to um, work on as much as I can is my fitness levels in terms of my running, running, um, and, and my strength work. I think, um, yeah, I'm sort of not naturally fast and I'm definitely not fast. So I need to work on that, but that can only, you can only work so much on that, but you can, you can always get fitter and stronger. So, um, yeah, that, that's probably been the biggest focus for me when I'm in off season and everything. It's, um, making sure I'm getting the kilometers in the legs still and, and running because, uh, they're, they're pretty hard pre or they're extremely hard pre-seasons and um, if you don't do the work you, you get found out and that's definitely helped me um, stay in the game and 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 help me play better footy mm, yeah that's awesome you guys do like to do a bit of running I remember seeing on the socials um, you're running around Strumlo was it and then uh, what was it Ricky pulling out the old snake prank um, the old <laughs> yeah. fake snake yeah yeah so that was a uh so this is our previous S and C Nige Ashley Jones, who was at the club for for ages, and he was awesome. And but he, he loved his long distance running, which you know I, I do rate him. I do miss him, but I don't I don't miss those <laughs> long, um, sessions. But yeah, Stromlo was I think oh, it might have been one point a couple of one point two kilometers around the track, um, and it's the first sort of at the Bulldogs we didn't do a heap of long distance, and Huddersfield we didn't do a lot. So when I come back here and we were doing um long distance stuff it was it was pretty challenging to get back into it but you know i got used to it but yeah you got um still got a few blokes with that snake snake trick but i think i was <laughs> yeah, i was pretty fatigued to even laugh i was yeah yeah i'm not a not a massive fan of long distance stuff so yeah. Was, um yeah but they're they're just it's just part of the gig and um, once pre-season's over you don't have to worry about it yeah, you just got to find that mixture, I would say, for as an SNC coach of that long distance and short distance. Because in a game, um, especially now with the NRL, because you're getting that six again, um, there's no stoppage in play, really. It's continuing on. So you sort of just got to pay attention to the game and understand that, yeah, I got to be really fast over certain distances and, and really good at changing direction. But um, that long distance can um, aid performance as well. Just You just got to make sure that you use it in the correct way and not just going out and doing 10Ks or something like that. You're mixing it up and um, and using it correctly. Yeah, exactly, mate. Yeah, and, and you're, you're spot on. You're sort of um, going away or it's probably because of the game and because we've had a change in strength and conditions, but um, we've done a heap of, a heap more focus on shorter, shorter stuff and more intense work in, instead of long distance stuff. Obviously you need to still get that to, to get your base, but um, yeah, it's definitely been a switch. And I think talking to other players in other clubs, um, they've been the same. They've, you know, it's changed now because of the, because of the speed of the game and everything. And there's a more of a, more of a focus on training at that high rate of intensity and the meters um per second per meter whatever it is you, you know yeah, there's a couple there's a few different ones yeah yeah so <laughs> um yeah but uh so that, that's good i think it's it's been it's been a good change to be honest mm. was that change a sort of a shock to the system with the six again rule like you're like oh yeah it's a great way to speed up the game and all that but actually playing it you're like oh this is a bit tough yeah absolutely yeah yeah definitely and it was sort of a weird one because they sort of sprung it on everyone mid-season normally they do those rule changes or the big ones they do at the end of the year and you can have a whole pre-season to base your to change your training and change your game plan or whatever but um i definitely definitely think it's helped the game but it sort of happened just mid-year and um caught a few people out so um yeah it's changed the game completely it's changed the game obviously with the training and everything but it's also changed the way teams sort of um, you know, players that have, have signed long-term contracts that, um, you know, especially bigger, bigger name players and, and bigger players in terms of forwards and that, that you, you got to be big and mobile now. You can't just be a big, big body without being able to get three minutes. So, 
Um, it's changed the way teams have recruited and changed lists and everything. So, um, yeah, as long as they sort of keep it this way now and don't chop it, chop and change it because it's hard for, you know, it's, it's hard enough for players to adapt, let alone clubs. So mm. I think it's going to change, but, um, yeah, they don't need to tinker with it too much now. Yeah, and it just comes back to your point of, of really ma- making sure that you maximise that preseason. Um, getting those K's in the legs, getting the motor going. And so you're able to um, perform and handle the workload that's coming in season. Yeah, exactly, mate. It's obviously where you get all your work done. It's when you get into 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 the season, it's it's more about recovery and game plans and that sort of stuff. So, um, you know, the 90% of the work's done in pre-season. There's a few top-ups here and there when, we, when we're in season. But, um, yeah, getting a full pre-season in and, and working hard just sets you up for a, for a year of... Um, of hopefully, yeah, performance and and uh, more importantly, being able to stay on the field and, and not get injured. Hundred yeah, percent. So, how do you become a successful halfback and five eight in rugby league? What what are those key attributes and skills needed for that position? Um, yeah, it's probably uh, there's probably a few things. I think you know when you're when you're young, um, it's it's a position where you can you can practice individual skill quite easily. I think that's where you like where it's it's um, being a half squat um, is easier to practice being a half little, um, compared to an outside back because you can always kick a footy, you can always pass a footy, you don't really need anyone there. So you can go down to the oval and and just um, you know, practice all those individual skills by yourself. So that was something that I always tried to do when I was young, just getting repetition in and kicking and passing and and all that sort of stuff. Whereas you know, if you're a forward, you probably need some some people to tackle and not everyone's going to put their hand up to, to run and get folded. And um, if you're an outside back catching all that sort of stuff, it's a bit different. So I think, um, you know, that, that's one part of it, just, you know, working on individual skill and um, getting that side of it right. But I think, um, you know, more importantly, it's just knowing the game and re- and putting the hours in of, of watching tape and um, watching players that, you know, the, the, the best of the, the position, you know, you know, can clear is your... Um, yeah, you Jack Whitens, you you know, you're the, the best players in, in the game. Um, if you're a young half coming through or even now um, an NRL half, um, you know, you know, watching what they do and, and taking little bits here and there and putting your own spin on it, um, you know, it's, it's a good starting point to, to, to be able to improve as a half and, um, and, and, and learn the craft. Mm, I love that. L- looking at other players and taking what you can and adding it to your game, you don't want to change your game to meet to play like that person. You want it to add to your game. I think that's the a really key important uh, key and an important part for um, for young athletes out there and current athletes as well. Because you don't you don't want to copy them. You just want to be able to understand what they're doing really well and how can I add that spice to my game. Yeah, big time, mate. They obviously, yeah, you know, everyone's different. And you look at you know you can compare um, you know Jackie White and to to someone like me and Jack's a you know freak athlete and can I'll never be able to do anything that, that he can do athletically. Um, but you know we can bounce ideas off each other about you know certain plays or, or whatever. And um yeah it's it's just it's good to learn off those players um and and you to pick up little things here and there. And um yeah as you said it's it's not gonna you're not gonna mirror your whole game on it. But if you can learn little bits and pieces here and there it's um you know it's gonna benefit benefit you going forward 100 percent. hi everyone we just wanted to take a break from this episode we hope you're enjoying this episode so far and also all the content we have produced we appreciate all the support from our listeners and followers so far if you haven't already sign up to elite rugby snc newsletter today we provide you free exclusive content each and every single week to our subscribers link in the bio Remember to like, subscribe, and share Elite Rugby SNC on social media to all your friends and families. So thanks again for your support, and now back to the episode. So when you make a mistake or things aren't going your way during the game, how do you overcome this and, and overcome those mistakes and play better? Yeah, it's something I probably still haven't. I don't think anyone completely masters. I mean, there probably are players that do, but that have, but I know it's still definitely a work in progress for me. I think um yeah as you get older and you have more experience you it definitely helps um not not getting too overwhelmed by a mistake or anything but um yeah just trying to you know trying to think about the next job i know it's a bit of, probably a bit of a cliche but that's that's definitely um you know it's helped me in in terms of you know because they're, they're probably especially early in my career i definitely used to dwell on things and 
think about things too much. But um, now that I've you know, had a bit more experience and we've got a couple of years under my belt, um, yeah, just not not overplaying or underplaying any situation, just taking it as it is, you know, whether it's good or bad. Um, you know, because I think on the flip side, you can focus on the good stuff too much and um, believe the hype or um, believe, you know, that you're, you're going better than what you think you are. But um, sometimes when you're making mistakes, um, you know, you're not going as bad as what you think you are as well. So just just moving on and, and brushing it and um, reviewing it later on, I think is the best part. Yeah, hundred percent. Just just try and control those emotions. Take a couple of breaths and just think about what's my next role that I can do to help um, make up for that mistake and and help the team go forward as well. So those are definitely something like some an area I remember. I was really young. I, I just I was just a hothead. I always got angry and was just swearing. I was like, oh, what is this? And look and looking back on it, just like hand to the face, like oh, why was I like that? And like now, a bit more calmer um, person. So yeah, it's just something you just got to grow through and learn through and um just see what works for you but yeah definitely look at those players who who do handle pressure um well and just sort of learn from them yeah exactly and you know the best the best way to learn is going as you said going through the experience so um you know i would love to have that experience five years ago six years ago seven years ago but um you don't get it until you go through it so it's just part of the journey (laughs) so how do you be the best teammate possible in the raiders squad um yeah it's probably you know the, the ones on the field are quite obvious obviously you know playing hard and putting your body on the line all that sort of stuff you know but every player in the nrl does that so um if, if you if you didn't do that you wouldn't be playing in the nrl i think the big the big part i've always um you know i've learned off players that i come through uh, players that I, I looked up to when i was coming through when i was younger is just buying into all the things off the field i think you know making sure that you're there um, for for your teammates when they need it and you know get things like going for for coffees and beers and all that sort of stuff and enjoying each other's company off the field is um you know i think a, a massive part of being a good teammate and building those relationships because um if you're not friends off the field you know obviously you don't have to be best friends or you know you're never going to be best friends with everyone but if you build those relationships off the field um that they just they transition onto the field easily and um yeah, I, don't th- I think that sort of gets overlooked as sometimes um, from you know, players that are coming through. They think it's all about um, doing extras and doing all the on-field stuff, which is really important. But, um, you know, yeah, buying, buying into the culture and um, the off-the-field off stuff is just as important in my eyes. A hundred percent. It's building those relationships. Um, and just like you said, it's, it, it really helps team performance and you'll probably look at the team at the end of the year who does win and you sort of see that brotherhood or sisterhood um, and they're just so connected to one another. They know what's going on in that person's life to, to an extent, but they just know each other um, on and off the field and they just gel so much better and they can probably communicate with each other a lot more effectively and and say, hey, this needs to be improved or you're doing that really well. So yeah, if you can, if you can build those relationships and understand people's stories um, from the players, the coaching staff, the physio team, it's just going to make the organization and team so much better. Massively, mate. Massively. And we, we've got to focus on that here at the Raiders and every club I've been to. It's, it's about, you know, being a good person first and then being a good player after it. And um yeah i think as you said it just builds that trust and build that builds that um relationship and it's only only going to be a good thing for the team 100 mm, percent. so good new new segment on the podcast it's i call it triple h um shout out to the real triple h and <laughs> wwe um it was something that I, I read um and people have heard me say this few times now on the podcast um you win in the locker room first and it was something that mike smith the head coach of atlanta falcons at the time got his players to do so there's there's three questions first one is hardship so can you think of a hardship in your rugby career that stands out and how did you get through this hardship and what did you learn um yeah i've probably got one main one and and then a few little ones but the main um as i sort of said before i had a, a bad head knock when i was in my first year in under 20s and um yeah, that was pretty scary. It was um, fairly early in the year and, um, yeah, I, I got sort of late shot um, and, uh, yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> Obviously, can't remember much. <laughs> I, I remember waking up in the in the hospital bed. I was sort of out cold. I had a, um, had a sort of convulsion on the field and everything, and that was scary because mum and dad were there and everything. And, um, yeah, that was, that was definitely the... That touch board, I've, I've been pretty good in terms of injuries, but that was 
a real scary one because obviously we've had knocks and everything. You, you sort of don't know. Um, we don't know much about it, and even back then, that was that was in uh, two thousand and thirteen, so almost ten years ago. So there was even less sort of information about it then. So I didn't really know if that was it or if I could continue to play. I ended up having um, oh, six or seven months off and and having um, just having a real conservative um, rehab and, and everything. And to, and I was lucky enough to, to come through it fine and, and got all the got the all clear. But um, yeah, that was that was a tough one just because I you know I hadn't I'd only played a couple of games of twenties and I was sort of just starting to play some good footy and. I was off, you know, obviously you got, you only got two years of under 20s to sort of crack it into the NRL and that took away, um, you know, three quarters of it. So, um, yeah, that was, that was a tough one, but, um, you know, I was lucky enough to get through it and had a lot of good people in my corner and family and friends and everything and, um, yeah, they got me through it. So, um, yeah, looking back on it, it was a scary one, but it probably set me up for, um, you know, a, a good career. Mm, it probably made you understand how important those people are in your life and in your corner as well to like, they, they have your back and they're here for you and they're here for you to help get you back to where you want to be as well. So um, yeah, definitely those hardships, definitely um, you, you can understand who's in your corner. Yeah, exactly, mate. Yeah. It's um, yeah. Always n- never nice to go through those things, but as you said, you, you, you learn plenty about yourself and about um, you know, the people around you. Mm. So the next H, so hero, who is your hero and why is this person your hero? Um, yeah, footy wise, I was always a massive Andrew Johns fan. Obviously, um, you know, being a half, and um, you know, he was he was the best half for for so many years there, and um, loved the way he played and kicked the footy and all that sort of stuff. So he was he was a massive um, hero of mine when I was growing up. Um, and yes, you know, just people around me as well, my brother, my dad, my papa, grandpa, everyone. I've always had really good role models and um, people that worked hard and. Um, show me how to, you know, how to, how, it showed me if you, if you work hard, you, you get, you know, good things go your way. So, um, yeah, in terms of footy, uh, footy heroes, probably Andrew Johns and then, um, yeah, all, all the, all the family members around me as well. That's awesome. So highlights. So what is the highlight that stands out the most in your rugby career so far? Um, probably my NRL debut. It's, it's pretty easy, I suppose. It's every, every, well, every kid's dream that plays in NRL and wants to make a career out of it. It's a dream to, to, to make the NRL. And, um, yeah, I debuted um, at the Bulldogs um, against the Broncos. And we had a good win and everything. And, um, yeah, it was a dream come true. And to do it, um, we, we played in Sydney. So all the boys come up and all my family come up. And, um, yeah, it was just a, yeah, a moment I'd, I'll never forget. And, um yeah, just it's still yeah a bit surreal even looking back on it now. It's um, yeah, it's, it's that that's definitely the highlight. That's awesome. So every year it seems like the level of competition and intensity of the game just goes up, and opposition players just get tougher. Like it's you just see some of those guys come out, you just and you're just like, whoa, this is this is scary. Um, for for me, it's scary just watching. Um, you playing it's something different but what advice do you have for people on managing their bodies um, to keep performing week in and week out yeah it's um you know i suppose it's different for we're lucky because we, we get given everything we're, we're told what to do and um obviously as you said we've got the facility there and um so you know for someone like me it's it's doing what we're told by our struggling listeners and obviously you got to do some stuff on top of it but um, I suppose for someone coming through or someone that doesn't get access to all the stuff we do, it's, um, yeah, I think diet's a big one. I think um, making sure you're eating well, obviously, you know, you don't have to, I think it can go two ways. You see people that are too strict with their diet and they don't give themselves a chance to, you know, have a cheat meal or whatever you want to call it or, um, and it sort of goes the other way. You can't stay consistent, but um, if you can stay consistently eating a, a good sort of, you know, balanced diet and, and making sure you look after yourself and what you're putting in your body. Um, I think that's a massive thing. And then, um, yeah, all well, your yeah, stretching and um, recovery stuff on top of it, um, you know, is important. But, you know, especially, um, you yeah, know, for me, I think diet, diet's probably the number one thing. Yeah, 100%. You need, you need that fuel in the body to be able to perform at your best, but also recover as well. And I think for me, learning over the years through diet and all that it's it's probably understanding if i do make a bad decision and go down the realm or something that's not 
that good for me. It's it's still understanding why it isn't that good. Whereas you sort of see some players, they just continue to eat that type of food, but they, they don't understand um, why that's bad. So I think if, yeah, if you get that better understanding your knowledge and don't eat those foods all the time, um, it can definitely just aid your performance because, you know, oh, I probably shouldn't be eating that, but I have been eating well throughout the week. I can reward myself if you choose to use those words or I can fit that little snack in because I have been fueling correctly throughout the day or the week. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. And there's also... You know, you got to, as you said, you got to know what body type and what sort of metabolism you have as well. We have some blokes in our team that have got ridiculous rigs, but their diet's horrendous. You can just name yourself if yeah, they, that's, that's one of yours. Yeah, I wish, I wish that was me. But then you got some <laughs> other blokes that, that eat really well and try their best, and they'll have one meal and they'll they'll blow out. So um, yeah, it's known what you know. It's, it's knowing what sort of body type you have, I suppose, and um, yeah, what's what's good and what's bad for you. Yeah, 100%. I'm one of those people, unfortunately. I eat a f- few bad things uh, a couple of weeks, then, yeah, I'm getting, I'm gaining a bit of weight on the, on the scale, so I really got to pay attention. But, um, yeah, I think the important thing is to not be too strict with it because, yeah, you can just get too focused and it's just you don't enjoy your food either and we want you to enjoy your food. Yeah, exactly, mate. Yeah, yeah. as I said, you, if you get, if you can't stay, if you're too strict and you, and you can't get, can't stay consistent with it and um yeah it goes the other way and you end up blowing out and um yeah you need to you need to enjoy it mm. so who would you say is the best teammate to room with and who is the not ideal roommate to, to room with yeah okay well um uh, best teammate probably um uh, probably i'd probably have to say adzi adam elliott just because we, we live together in in um in sydney for a couple of years so now yeah, we're really good mates and uh, yeah, we know what each other likes and dislikes. So, um, yeah, that, he'd probably have to be number one. Um, and then the the least, um, he's actually not with us. And he's not at the club anymore. He's just sort of um, stopped playing with us halfway through the year. But Semi Williams, definitely, that's an easy, that's another easy one. He's I roomed with him at the start of the year and um, heard some. I'd heard some bad things about his rooming habits previously. <laughs> And I experienced it um, this year. At the, um, we were playing a trial up against the Roosters um, up in Sydney, so stayed the night before. And um, he, yeah, he was just he was no good. He he he's real sensitive to light and sound and everything. So he's got to put blue tack in his ears before he goes to bed and put <laughs> my mask on. And um, I went to go have a shower, and he'd use my my um, my towel as a bath mat, so it was soaked. So I was using a a washer for a hand for, for a towel and then um we got to the game the next morning and he tested positive for covid um so then I guess i was his roommate he gave me covid so both of us got ruled out <laughs> and we both missed the next trial and we couldn't we had to drive separately back to canberra so yeah he takes a cake um number one <laughs> Rooney, and he wouldn't shout a coffee anyway so um, yeah sorry sammy but i've just yeah, yeah definitely definitely um definitely him that's all good i think i think you re- really got to pay attention to your habits um if you're rooming with someone just make sure you've got some ground rules and know like hey that's my towel or i like to have things a certain way just just communicate that to your teammate and that's what that's the experience of getting to know them as well and um if it really doesn't work out for you just just talk to the coach and like can i just get a new roommate because he's doing my head in yeah exactly and i think we actually and i'm really good mates with sammy so i can explain so that's fine but we actually set the precedent um, for the NRL there because we both got COVID. Um, they changed the rules there around rooms, roommates, so we don't have roommates anymore every time we go away. Oh, that's every, awesome. Yeah, every club gets a, every player gets their own room, sorry, and every club does that now. So, yeah, all well, this year I've been riding solo, um, you know, especially last year, going up in the hub or in the hub for three months or so and, uh, no, yeah, probably, yeah, a bit longer, three, three and a half months and um, we all got our own rooms, thankfully, because if we had a roommate for three months, um, yeah. it, it could have been, could have been anything, so mm. um, yeah, they've, we're, we're riding solo at the moment, so yeah, I don't mind that. That's a, that's a good initiative because I'm a, such a terrible sleeper in terms of if someone's making noise or they're snoring, oh, it's just a bad time for me. If, if I can get to sleep first, I'm good, mm. but if, if you were snoring next to me, mate, yeah you would be hearing it <laughs> yeah yeah well that's me so yeah you wouldn't want to room with me then i'll be no yeah. good so what is your game day routine is there a certain um ritual you like to do or procedure sorry like just 
like to do throughout the day? The certain foods you like to have? Um, is there certain music you like to listen to as well? Um, yeah, I, I sort of used to have a bit of a stricter routine, but now I don't really have any routine. I sort of, um, well, I don't have a strict one anyways. I, I like to get, like everyone, we sort of like to get moving in the morning just to go for a walk and get a coffee or something. Um, it depends, obviously, um, when you're playing is a big, uh, you know, changes things up. Sometimes we're playing at two o'clock, sometimes we're at eight o'clock at night. So sort of changes with the later games. I'll, I'll normally have an Arvo nap and try to switch off because you sort of, by the time you, you finish them games, you're not, you don't get home until sort of 12 o'clock or so. So they're sort of late nights, but um, yeah, I, I just sort of try to stay as relaxed as I can, go for a, go for a walk, get a coffee. And then um, yeah, music wise, I, I don't really have a, a preference, just anything, mate, anything. Um, yeah. Don't, I don't really get into, we, we've changed it around a little bit. We, um, there's a bit of music playing in the sheds now, which is a bit different, but um, yeah, you can still sort of, it's not loud enough, but you can't listen to your own music. But um, yeah, that's only sort of been a new thing that we've done, um, have a bit of music in the, in the sheds and uh, yeah, I haven't had that previously. So um, it's a bit different. Who's on the DJ in the sheds? Um, I think it's normally Corey, Harry and Ira. Um, so yeah, he's mixed reviews. <laughs> not going to please everyone um but yeah it's it's not too bad you can sort of zone out and put your own music on if you want to so i normally do that that's fair enough do you like a certain type of music genre um not really mate to be honest i'm um yeah as i said i've um i don't really yeah i'm anything i'm i'm pretty uh yeah i don't really have one sort of set genre fair enough we got a lot of country fans a lot of the boys like their country yeah it's a good um, it's a great genre mate yeah, but yeah, I'm not massive. I'm not not massive old country. I don't mind. It's growing on me, but um, yeah. yeah, there's definitely some country fans in, in the team. Yeah, that's fair enough. So, what advice do you have for rugby league rugby league athletes wanting to play in the NR, in the NRL? Um, yeah, I think yeah, you know, it's a pretty obvious one. But yeah, you know, working hard is probably the number one thing, and making sure you, um, yeah, just you know, out working everyone around you and, and doing all your little extras and learning from the coaches and, and, and all that sort of stuff. They're all, you know, obvious ones that, you know, people probably already know. I think, you know, the, the biggest one um, for, for me that I probably didn't know I was doing at the time, but I, you know, I, 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 I did have a belief, even though I probably never told anyone I, I inside me, I, I, I genuinely believe that I could, can make a career out of it and um, if you have that belief and you have that confidence to do that um, it sort of pushes you to to go to all those things all those extras and everything so I think that's the number one thing because if you don't have that belief and you don't have that confidence naturally you're just not gonna you're not gonna rip in and you're not gonna you know fully fully commit to it so um, I think that's you know that's that's the number one thing and it sort of ties back into what we were sort of saying before about um players that make it in the NRL that, that weren't gun juniors and that's hard, that belief and that confidence is hard if you're not making rep teams and everything. But um, there's plenty of players that are in the NRL now that have gone down the same path. So, um, you know, if they can do it, no one means everyone else can. And, um, yeah, just believe in it and um, good things will come off the back of it. Oh, I love that. I love that. Yeah, you, you do see a lot of... Um players who do make it a late bloomers um and it's sort of a, a theme now in, in rugby union that a lot of forwards and stuff aren't getting signed till probably mid-20s so you just yeah. got to keep at it because that one kid might have got signed at 17 or 18 but it's not necessarily going to be you so and if it's not you you just got to keep working hard and, and enjoy that process and, and if you keep working at it something will come out of it yeah massive mate. And i think a really good example of that is um zach wolford here who's at the raiders he he was a, you know, a, he wasn't a great junior, but then had the same sort of thing as me. He had a really good twenties career, and then kicked on, come to the Bulldogs, didn't didn't play NRL, and then went to the Knights, didn't play NRL, and then he sort of just been working the last couple of years, playing part time for Newtown, and got an opportunity this year to come down on a training trial that he thought he was never going to get, and now he's played, you know, the, the whole pretty much three quarters of the season as a starting hooker in the NRL, and he signed a two year deal. Um, so. And he's 25, and yeah, he, if you asked him at the start of the year if he was going to play in RL, he would have told you your line. So there's plenty of examples. He's not the only one. There's plenty of examples like that. So um, yeah, if you really want to stick at it and and have a red hot crack at it, um, it can happen to anyone. And that and that game he played was it some corp against the Broncos? Was it? 
Uh, yeah, he debuted. A, he yeah, debuted yeah. at Suncorp against the Sharks in, in Magic. Yeah, Sharks. Yeah. Sorry, and he yeah, yeah he played he played really well. That was awesome yeah. to see. Yeah, no, no, he's he's playing some really good footy. So, um, yeah, it's a great example of of someone that stuck at it and um, yeah had that belief and um, got the rewards on the back of it. Mm, that's awesome. So that's all my questions for today. If listeners do want to um, connect with you on social media, where can they find you? Yeah, probably on Instagram. They won't get much out of it. I'll, I'll post a photo every <laughs> three years, so they might they might see good. me. Yeah, they might see me post in 2026. But um, uh, yeah, Matt Frawley 24 on Instagram, um, and yeah, they can they can find me there. But yeah, they won't they won't be getting much out of it. <laughs> That's all good. So, that, yeah, that's all my questions today. So, thanks, Matt, for joining us and, and thank you for everyone uh, for listening. No, cheers, Kizza. Appreciate it, mate. So, thanks for tuning into another episode of Elite Rugby SNC podcast. Remember to like, subscribe, and rate Elite Rugby SNC on Spotify, YouTube, and follow us on Instagram. Sign up to become a beast today via the link in the description or via Instagram page. Also, sign up to our newsletter and receive free bonus content each and every single week. So don't wait, make that good decision and join Elite Rugby SNC today and take your game to the next level.